most blockchains that we know about today are facing some issue around scaling. What is Aroha's design philosophy um, in regard to scaling? Well, scaling is not a new issue in computer science. And uh, distributed databases today try to solve the issue of scaling by putting a virtual file system on top of maybe a cluster of servers, right? So maybe MongoDB or Cassandra. So uh, we want to carry on with that. So we're creating a database called Amitsuchi that has a virtual file system that allows you to store data on a cluster of servers. Uh, but maybe what's even more interesting or more important is uh, we can do data analytics on that. So we're working on a, you know, some tools to do data analytics and machine learning on top of the data. So until now, uh, most of the data inside blockchains has been you know, kind of dead data, just the data store or ledger, but it ends there. But really you have to have analytics and um, you know, different machine learning techniques on top of this ledger in order to find new uh, inferences or new discoveries. So that's, uh, that's one of the main innovations of what we're working on right now. What is Aroha's approach to security and identity? Uh, so identity is a really big issue. and It's actually one of the key themes that what our company is doing, because we're working on a KYC system for banks. Uh, we handle identity really um, in a way such that each device handles their own keys without using a centralized key server. So uh, if you create a mobile app, you want all your users to generate keys on their phones instead of you generating keys and giving, giving them to them. Um, so it's just something that is much more secure than the you know, centralized uh, you know, system. Does Iroha have a concept of a smart contract? We do, and actually this is something that our concept is evolving quite a lot. Uh, we're trying to kind of go beyond the current state they are in smart contracts. There's lots of issues right now in smart contracts with um, scalability. So for example, uh, the way that we're currently doing it is similar to Fabric. So Fabric starts up a Docker image and then runs uh, smart contracts inside Docker. Uh, we set up a JVM and then run smart contracts inside that. It's actually very similar to what Corda does. But uh, just starting up a JVM takes about half a second uh, of time, which is really long. and uh, it, it just, just won't scale. You can't, it doesn't make sense to wait half a second to create a JVM and then run uh, code that takes you know, a few nanoseconds to run and then shut it down. Uh, so what we're trying to do is kind of go beyond this and find a, a more reasonable approach. So what we're looking at now are really two solutions. Uh, one is allowing users to define their own commands. Uh, they're, the commands are kind of like aliases in a way for a program uh, that you can then use on the ledger. And because of our permissioning system, maybe not everyone has access to these. Uh, you can control what users can, can run them. So um, even if a program tries to do something malicious, in the end it's still sandboxed, so maybe it's okay. And uh, the other uh, approach that we're looking at is something that is actually very old. We're looking at rule-based systems, like uh, research that was done back in the 1970s, uh, where you have a whole bunch of data, and then uh, based on the data that you have, you find uh, different patterns that match rules, and then you execute the rules. And a lot of what we found that customers want from smart contracts are not these programs that they decide to run at some interval or something, they want rule matching. They want to have rules where if these types of data are stored, then automatically you have some problem. So that's something that we're putting a lot of effort into researching right now. Uh, to be honest, it's, it's hard to know what is going to be the most useful, but there has to be something done because uh, a lot of smart contracts right now are very slow and efficient, lots of bugs. I mean, look at the, the DAO hack or even reports studying uh, Ethereum smart contracts where there's uh, 10 bugs per 100 lines of code. So, <laughs> so it's, it's something that needs a lot of uh, thought and, and careful design. And we're, not, we're not there yet. What languages are currently supported by Aroha? So Aroha Core is written in C++. Uh, we are trying to support Java as the smart contract language, um, just in the JVM, because lots of people know Java and it's sandboxed. Uh, we're, we also have the SDKs in Swift on the iOS, uh, Android, Java, uh, Scala, Python. Um, 
So these different in JavaScript and these different SDKs so that you uh, interoperate with the system as easily as possible. And uh, we're, we're kind of hoping that other people will give us some more contributions, like things like Rust or, or interesting languages like that or Lua. Okay, that's it. Yeah, thanks. For a while. Yeah. <laughs>